Hello, grade 12s. Welcome back as we continue to help justice at his restaurant by looking at graphs of normal distribution. Let's join Zinzi now. Different graphs are used for various types of information, so we need to select the type of graph that will best show the data we have. In the last lesson, we conducted a survey in Justice's restaurant to identify what people think of his restaurant. The survey asked, one, what do you think of the food in our restaurant? And two, what do you think of the service in our restaurant? Remember that the data we collected from the survey is discrete and so is not useful for graphing as grouped data. I suggest we change the raw scores to a percentage rating. Each interval in our new data will be continuous. Look at how I've grouped our data. Scores below 2 fall into the first interval from 0 to less than 20%. The second interval includes all scores of 2 and 3 and so on. If we look at people's opinions of the food, a mean score of 66,4 was achieved with a standard deviation of 21,4. Let's quickly go over the mean and standard deviation for the service. Using this mean equation for grouped data, we summed the product of the frequencies and their respective values and divided them by the sum of the frequencies. Let's apply this to our data of percentage scores for service. Here we take the midpoint value of each interval and multiply this by the frequency. With all the information in the equation like this, we can use our calculator to solve this. And we get a mean of 54%. Now that we've worked out the mean, let's calculate the standard deviation using the scores as percentages. Do you remember the standard deviation equation for grouped data? It tells us that the standard deviation squared is equal to the sum of the products of the frequencies with the squared differences between their respective values and the mean, divided by the sum of the frequencies. We will use a table as before in order to make finding the standard deviation easier. We'll work our way across the table from the first column through to the fifth and then sum the second and fifth columns. To complete our calculation, the standard deviation is then just the square root of the sum of the fifth column divided by the sum of the second. This gives a resulting standard deviation of 19,18, which we round off to 19,2. Now, let's take our grouped data, shown as percentages, and put them into a histogram. To draw the histogram of our data, we need to decide what goes on the x-axis and what goes on the y-axis. The independent variable, the score, will be on the x-axis, the y-axis must represent the dependent data, and thus it will show the frequencies. Remember, for a histogram, the data must be continuous and not discrete. Here are histograms of the results of the food and service surveys from the restaurant. If we look closely at the first chart, it's easy to see that the middle is in the interval 60 to 80 with a large portion of the data lying in this interval. Notice, the next largest interval is from 40 to 60. This further reinforces our confidence in the correctness of the mean and standard deviation values we calculated. In fact, the diagram makes these values much easier to understand. In the second diagram, as with the first, we can easily see that our calculated values for the standard deviation and mean match up well. Looking at this graph, we see the center point is in the interval 40 to 60, but the next largest interval is from 60 to 80. Here, the mean is 54, and the spread or standard deviation is 19,2. Histograms with these shapes are very common in data handling. If we trace the shape of these curves and follow their trends, we see they make a bell shape. These trend lines are like doing frequency polygons, but without joining the points perfectly. Instead, we draw a smooth line that approximately goes through each of the points. These bell-shaped curves are called normal distributions and were first described by the famous French mathematician de Moivre in 1783. These curves are always centered about the mean 
and they spread about the mean is described by the standard deviation. Hi, Justice. Hi, Zinzi. <laughs> How are you? Oh, well, not too bad. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Mm -hmm. So, Justice, you can see that most people feel that the food is not too bad, while the service is quite average. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can see that. I now need to isolate the problem so that I can really work out how to make my customers happier. Maybe I could work out which food they like and which they don't, as well as the waiters who need help with their service skills. So tell me, uh, will you help me with these problems? Because I'm not quite sure how to do this. Absolutely. First, let's look at what food options there are, and then we'll look at how many waiters you have. Okay, let's look at the menu. I think it will be the easiest. Okay, so your mains are prime T-bone, mm -hmm. chicken pancetta, and the traditional battered hake and chips. Mmm, they all sound delicious. I'm sure I'd love the food here. And the waiters, how many are there? Well, I have four permanent waiters that I rely on to keep my customers happy. I'll tell you what we can do. Let's conduct another survey. And this time we'll first ask which of the meals the customers ordered. And then we'll ask the customers to write down which way to serve them. Waiters one, two, three or four. That's very clever. Perhaps this will help me work out exactly how the customers feel about the specific foods, as well as which of the waiters are giving good service and which of the waiters are giving bad service. Well, I'll be back in a few weeks once the survey has been completed. We'll analyze the data and then maybe we can work out exactly how you can improve. I'll see you then. Thank you. Go oh, well. All right, goodbye. Bye-bye. Here are the results of the latest surveys. Great. So we'll start analyzing these immediately so we can get you some advice on how to improve. For this survey, we allowed customers to fill in any value between 0 and 10 as a rating so that we can have a continuous set of data. I grouped the data into intervals from 0 to less than 2 and so on. Now here we have the results for the three dishes on Justice's menu. The prime T-bone, the chicken pancetta and the traditional battered hake and chips. It's hard just looking at these tables to really grasp what they're telling us. Maybe we should draw their histograms and see if we can gauge things a bit better. Remember to draw the histogram we put the variable we're measuring on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis. Look at this. The histograms for each of the meals make it quite easy to see which of the meals is the least popular and which is the most popular. Look at the prime T-bone dish. Most of its scores seem to be quite high with the middle being around 8. For the chicken pancetta dish, the scores seem average with its middle sitting around 6. The traditional battered hake and chip scores seem low. The middle is around 5. Do you also notice the bell shape in each of these curves? The curves also show similarity to the normal distribution that we discussed earlier. Can you identify some trends? Wow, that was really easy to identify. So, people don't like my hake. Well, I guess I'll have to improve it and maybe improve the chicken. It's great. Thanks for all the help you've given me. So, now I need to go out and find a new recipe for my fish, huh? Eh? Well, good luck with that. <laughs> well, that's about all we have time for today. Let's just have a quick recap of what we learned. The lesson was very interesting because we looked at some of the benefits of using graphs to represent data and the ease with which we can interpret them. We also learned to look at the trends of the data and learned about the bell-shaped curve called the normal distribution. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Advanced Statistics Task video. You'll also be able to find more resources on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.